Hello, Assalamu alaikum and very good morning from Lahore, Pakistan. I am Dr. Javed Iqbal Kokar, Professor of Forensic Medicine and Toxicology, as we are discussing thanatology. And in this lecture, I will be discussing the biochemical changes which appear after death. And the learning objective of this lecture will be that I will be discussing in this lecture the biochemical changes which appear after death. They are important because they help us not only in determining the time since death, but also sometimes when the anatomical autopsy and the pathological findings are deficient, then they help in determining the cause or the disease. And these are the changes which appear in the body fluids and the changes appear which are particularly important in the blood CSF, that is the cerebrospinal fluid and ocular fluid. So these three body fluids, they are important regarding the biochemical changes which appear after death. So starting with the lecture, biochemical changes which appear after death, they help us in various ways. For example, when the injury is not present and autopsy reveals no significant anatomic or pathological abnormality, then these biochemical changes help us. And they also help in evaluation of physiological effect of a recognizable anatomical lien. They help in differentiating the pathological lien. And they help in estimation of time since death. So three body fluids, as I have told, they are important. The blood, the cerebrospinal fluid, and the vitreous humor or the ocular fluid. So the changes in blood biochemistry, they are the concentration of all blood components change after death. So all the components of the blood, they changes after death and the factors which are responsible for these changes, they are the functioning of the organs between somatic and molecular death continues. And hence these changes are responsible in that period when somatic death and molecular death, there is a time period in between. Then postmortem action of bacteria and various enzymes. Then altered permeability of the dying cell membrane. So these are the factors which are responsible for the change in the biochemistry. At the time of certain, certain natural deaths, some changes take place in blood due to altered body functions like agonal acidosis, which is associated with marked increase in uh, non-protein nitrogen that becomes over 100 milligram per cent. Then there is increase in the blood urea, which may be seen as risen to 75 milligram per cent. And similarly, there is increased in amino acid nitrogen that is above 12 milligram per cent. So all these changes, they are as a result of tissue breakdown. Tissue breakdown in a period between somatic and molecular death. Now the pH of the blood. The pH of the blood and the tissues fall because it, there are certain changes. And this is becoming now acidic. From alkaline, it becomes acidic due to terminal accumulation of the carbon dioxide and lactic acid after death. Then after about 24 hours, due to production of ammonia from the enzymatic breakdown of the proteins, the pH then starts rising and it again become alkaline. In normal life, it is alkaline, but after death, it, it becomes acidosis, acidic. And then after 24 hours, it again, after death, it again uh, start towards the alkaline. Now about the plasma chloride. The plasma chloride normal value is 95 to 105 millimole per liter. 
and soon after death, the chloride in the plasma and RBC equalizes and become 74 millimole per liter because of the permeability, altered permeability and the equilibrium is, equilibrium is established. Then the concentration drops due to extracellular diffusion and becomes half, that is 37 millimole per liter in 72 hours. <clears throat> which is uh, mill in milligrams, when we calculate milligrams per deciliter is equal to 18 millimole per deciliter. So one milligram is equal to 18 millimole. About the magnesium, normal value is 0 0.07 to 1.2 millimole per liter. And with the onset of protection, it starts rising and reaches eight times than the normal in 74, in 72 hours. Regarding potassium, the normal value is 3.8 to 5 millimole per liter. And it starts rising after death, owing to do because of the diffusion from the vascular endothelium. Then the postmortem accumulation of various enzymes in the serum. The normal values of amylase is 23 to 85 international unit per liter, lactic dehydrogenase 90 to 250 milli units per liter, and acid phosphatase up to 0.7 unit per liter. Alkaline phosphatase 30 to 95 micro unit per liter, and transaminase 5 to 35 micro unit per liter. So these enzymes in the first few hours after that, as a result of increased tissue breakdown, they rise and this peak activity varies for each enzyme. And regarding their time of various appearance, the amylase rises to its maximum concentration in 34 to 48 hours, transaminase in 48 to 60 hours, and lactic dehydrogenase on the fourth day. Now regarding sugar and the urea. The blood sugar and blood urea also rises after death. Breakdown of liver glycogen results in accumulation of the blood glucose in inferior vena cava and then in the right side of the heart. Blood sugar rises more than 300 milligram per deciliter within first 12 hours. And this diffusion does not extend beyond the heart as lungs provide an effective barrier. So no reliance can be made on the blood glucose level if the blood is collected from either the inferior vena cava or the right side of the heart. So examination of peripheral blood might help and if it is raised more than 200 milligram per deciliter, then it is uh, particular to say that it is postmortem in rise. Then care should be taken in interpretation of the result as in agonal period, there is a rise in blood glucose and can be produced by hypoxia, carbon monoxide poisoning and effects of trauma. So in these conditions also, the blood glucose level can rise. Now the blood urea concentration, this can rise also in the agonal period due to, due to the level of 150 milligram uh, deciliter that it can rise in the agonal period up to 150 milligram per deciliter. But usually the serum levels within first 48 hours is never above 100 milligram per deciliter, unless there is an increase in urea concentration during life. That means because of some disease of the kidney, when there is uh, high urea, then it can be uh, risen above the 100 milligram. So serum concentration of blood urea more than 300 milligram per deciliter and creatinine more than 10 milligram percent undoubtedly indicate that is renal failure because of uremia. So cerebrospinal fluid or CSF, 
In CSF, the normal amount is approximately 150 milliliter. It starts disappearing in 24 to 48 hours after death. The time of death can be estimated with plus minus eight hours of actual time. Sample can easily be obtained by tapping the cisterna magna. In first 12 to 18 hours after death, it is noted that the lactic acid rise from 50 milligram to more than 200 milligram per second. And non-protein nitrogen from 15 milligram to 40 milligram and amino acid nitrogen from 1 milligram to 12 milligram. So due to these changes, the time since death can be estimated. The amino acid nitrogen, if it is less than 14 milligram percent, it is due to postmortem period is less than 12 hours. We can say that postmortem period is less than 12 hours if the amino acid nitrogen is less than 14 milligram percent. Non-protein nitrogen, if they are, are less than 80 milligram percent, then the period is 20, less than 24 hours. Creatinine less than 5 milligram, then the period is less than 12 hours. And the phosphorus less than 15 milligram percent, then the period is less than 10 hours. Now about the ocular fluid or vitreous humor. The vitreous humor or the aqueous fluid are free from circulation in a dead body and up to two milliliter of blood can be easily withdrawn from each eyeball with the help of needle and syringe. After death, there is steady rise in the potassium level in the vitreous humor. And it has been observed that there is a linear relationship between the potassium concentration and the postmortem interval over 100 hours after death. That means up to 100 hours after death, there is a definite linear relationship between potassium concentration and the postmortem interval. And if the postmortem interval is over 100 hours after death, then there is a standard error of plus minus 4.7 hours. And as we know that the normal uh, potassium concentration is 3.4 milliequivalents per liter. And the studies have shown that the rate of increase is approximately 0.17 milli equivalent per liter per hour. Now regarding the ascorbic acid, <clears throat> pyruvic acid and non-protein nitrogen, studies are also helpful in determination time since that. But the most important criteria is the potassium, which is more reliable and dependable criteria because there is steady increase regarding the time frame. So thank you very much. This is all about the lecture on the uh, body fluids after death. What are the changes which can appear? If you like my videos, please subscribe to my channel. And this is my channel name. Thank you very much.